about what's happening today. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg testifying in front of your committee today, discussing the need to invest in infrastructure, saying in written remarks that, quote, China spends more on infrastructure every year than the U.S. and Europe combined. The infrastructure status quo is a threat to our collective future. The administration reportedly weighing a $3 trillion-plus plan. Uh, Congressman, what are your thoughts on this next major spending plan being talked about? And, of course, it's going to be followed up with the highest tax increases that we've seen in a long time to pay for all of this. Yeah, um, absolutely correct. And, and China does not only invest in their infrastructure, but they're doing the Belt and Roads uh, program, which they're investing in many many uh, infrastructures around the, uh, from countries around the world, including our neighbors to the south. Uh, but we need to be focused on the infrastructure here in the United States right now. Uh, we have many needs. Uh, what what I think the Republicans from the Republicans' perspective, we're concerned about what exactly do they mean by infrastructure, uh, because we do not want this to become a, a climate change bill. We know Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is pushing to make this a, a Green New Deal. Uh, and how much is this going to cost, and, and how are we going to pay for it? I think those are our main concerns. Certainly, as a New Yorker, I understand the need to upgrade our infrastructure. You know, the New York City subway is still dealing with communication uh, with signals from pre-World War II, we need to upgrade to communication-based train control. We have a mar maritime industry here. We have shipping ports, airports. There are a lot of needs. And I'm wondering how somebody like Mayor uh, Pete Buttigieg, who, who, who oversaw a town that was, you know, basically the same population as my New York State Assembly District, is going to look at the infrastructure needs of these major cities like New York. But certainly what we saw in the COVID relief bill, Maria, was that they use that as a guise to pay for all sorts of other things that has nothing to do with COVID relief. And we're concerned that they're going to try to do the same with transportation and infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what they're doing, Congresswoman. We know that. Uh, I mean, look, yesterday, Mark Penn was with us and said this administration continues to mislabel everything. They called a COVID plan uh, a COVID relief package, even though it was only 10 percent related to COVID. Now they're calling a climate change plan, an infrastructure plan. Much of the money, $400 billion, uh, is, is just geared toward climate. Uh, so, so there's that. But what about? I want to ask you about taxes because they're going up federally, nationally. We know that. But New York, in particular, 250 CEOs and executives have uh, expressed alarm over what could become the largest tax increase in New York history. Uh, the group of business leaders sending the letter to uh, Andrew Cuomo, the governor, and legislators expressing alarm at what they say uh, will seriously pull back the economy uh, in, uh, in uh, New York. Signers of this letter include J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon, BlackRock Chairman and CEO Larry Fink, Pfizer CEO, Citigroup CEO, JetBlue CEO. What are your uh, thoughts on taxes in New York and where they're going uh, and, and the impact, as these CEOs write? Well, sure. Look, we know that President Trump's success in having the best economy uh, in decades and really the lowest unemployment probably ever in history uh, was because of the tax cuts that he put forward that incentivized these uh, job creators to expand and create more jobs. You know, all that's in jeopardy right now during a time when we're recovering. So that should be a major concern to everybody, because if, if, if we're trying to jumpstart this economy and get us back on track, uh, and they're raising taxes at the same time at both the state level and at the federal level, you know, that's going to really slow down uh, our recovery, and it's going to hurt people who are trying to get back into the workforce. Uh, New York State has a, a real big problem with spending. They want to put forward a, a $208 billion budget, which is almost the same as California spends, yet California has twice as many, uh, has, uh, twice as many residents. So when you look at it from that perspective and you see that, hey, the budget in Florida is half as much as no state income tax, of course people are going to be leaving to the state of Florida. So this is something that, you know, we continue to make the case that, look, the tax that you're going to receive from someone who leaves is going to be zero. But if we can jumpstart this economy, get, get companies to expand, create more jobs, you're going to gain more revenue from that success. So I think they're looking at it from a very backwards perspective. Don't tax up front. 
But you know what? When the company's successful and people are successful and people are working and people are buying goods, then you're going to gain uh, revenue off that tax. <laughs> So I think that's the way the state should be looking at it. But unfortunately, they have a spending problem and uh, they want to increase spending by 22 percent in New York, which is completely outrageous yeah. and on things that we don't even need and where government shouldn't be involved. Yeah, well, it does have an impact. That's why we're seeing droves of people leaving New York and businesses as well. We'll be watching that, Congressman. Great to see you today. Nicole Meliotakis will talk soon. Thank you. Coming up, a Thank new you. way to shop. One